Mm. Hey YouTube, this is Jeremy Who Weeps. Um, I'm going to be talking about evil. 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 Evil Knievel. I don't know if anybody remembers Evil Knievel. That's telling my age. I do remember Evil Knievel. Anyways, I'm talking about evil. Um, what is evil? What do you think evil is? What is it? Any takers? Anybody have a, an opinion or thought on what evil is? Um, I do. I've thought about evil. Um, now, I've heard some, you know, differing thoughts. I've heard, you know, about how... Um, Basically, everybody's sinful. I think maybe people would um, equate sin with evil. Um, that everybody's sinful, everybody's born sinful. So I'm going to try to talk a little bit about what that is. Um, evil. Born sinful. Sinful. My understanding. Sinful is better understood as dysfunctional, malfunctioning, not functioning the way you're supposed to. And I think that makes sense, because if you look at the world, how are things supposed to be? People are supposed to be benefiting each other, um, doing good to each other. Love is supposed to be the substance of reality, correct? I believe so. If love is the substance of reality, then what is not of love? What's contrary to love? Wronging someone, wronging each other, that's not love. Um, being dysfunctional is when you have two people in a relationship, well this is one definition, I, I one, one take on dysfunctional anyways. Two people in a relationship and they are not doing right by each other. Now, f um, functionally, two people in a relationship would be benefiting each other and would be making life better for each other, better than it would be if they were not interacting. That would be functional. Dysfunctional is when two people interact and one of them or both of them are um, having wrong done to them in some way. Now you can take um, Take Yahweh's instructions, okay? Yeshua, otherwise known as Jesus. Um, his, he says the, be, the most primary commandments, primary instructions are, love Yahweh, hear O Yisrael, and Yisrael means um, he turns the head of Ale, he gets Ale's attention, okay? And Ale being Yahweh, the almighty, all-powerful, um, who people think of as God. Um, so that's Ale, he turns the head of Ale, he gets Ale's attention. Um, you know, if there's somebody that you think looks really good, they may turn your head. You may want to check them out a little bit more. Um, so that's, that's, um, Yisrael and the Almighty. He, he gets his attention. Here, um, here, listen up and pay attention and act accordingly, Yisrael. Yahweh, our most powerful authority, our ultimate powerful authority, our Ale. That's what Ale means powerful authority, but with Yahweh, since Yahweh is the ultimate, El is the ultimate powerful authority. Hear O Israel, Yahweh, our ultimate powerful authority, Yahweh is one, uno, um, the only one, one, numeral, one, and you will love, um, Yahweh, your ultimate powerful authority, with all of your heart and mind and all that you think and your will, with all of who you are, your entire being, everything about you, and with all of your strength and all that you do, all of your behavior, everything you act out in the day. So that's the first and primary one. Um, this, and he says the second one is like it. Love your neighbor, your fellow human being, as you love yourself. You want to do good. You want good for yourself. You know, um, you want life to be good for you, and and that's how you're supposed to treat other people. 
you you look out for your own best interests and that's how you're supposed to be with other people you're you're supposed to look out for their best interests that's how you're supposed to operate that's that's the optimal that's um like those two instructions are the optimal way things should be those are functional that's reality functioning correctly and and functioning well um, and then the, the ten instructions are a breakdown of those. You've got the first four where Yahweh says, don't replace me with anything else. Um, don't have any other gods before me. Um, and he says, don't make for yourselves anything to replace me with. Um, don't make yourself to, uh, something to worship and bow down to and, and say this is my God. You know. Um, the, the third one he says, um, don't disrespect uh, my, my name and my character and who I am. And don't um, misrepresent me. That's that's the third one. And then the fourth one, he says, remember the Shabbat, the, the day of ceasing and resting. You know, you're supposed to have a day off. Um, six days you can work. You can get all your stuff bun done, but you're supposed to have at least one day. You're supposed to have one day to recharge, rest, um, relax, enjoy life. That's what the whole the day is supposed to be all about, that and, and enjoying your creator who loves you and, and the people around you. You know, the people that you love and love you. I, I think that's my understanding of that day. So anyways, that's the first four. Then there's honor your father and your mother. And Yahweh, of course, is the ultimate father and mother. He's beyond gender and he's he's got um, fatherly uh, attributes, characteristics, and motherly attributes and characteristics, masculine and feminine. They both come from him. Um, when I say him, I'm, I'm using that as a generic term since it's Yahweh and he doesn't have gender. It goes beyond gender. So, um... And then there's do not murder, and um, that includes like what leads to murder, having animosity towards somebody, um, being dysfunctional, not not um, blend well, um, not good relations with someone. When you're seeking to harm somebody, or you have animosity or hostility towards somebody, um, I mean, if you if you can rein that in, that's really good. But that's not functional, right? Um, you know, I mean, I know that people have differences and stuff, and that can cause friction and stuff, and that can lead to um, problems and difficulties in relationship. But we're not we're not supposed to be seeking others' harm in any way, whether in thought, word, or deed. Um, we're supposed to be seeking the benefit of each of each other. So, so that's that um, instruction: do not murder, do not seek to do others' harm. Um, I mean, the very literal is do not murder. Um, do not intentionally harm any you know uh, seek to end somebody's life but i think you can uh, extrapolate that into meaning you know the the the, the source of, of the instruction is do not har seek to harm each other do not harm each other then you have um do not commit adultery which is basically do not have sex with um do not have sex or um be inappropriately intimate with another man's wife or another woman's husband and then, of course, you can extrapolate that into saying, well, if somebody's not married yet, if you have sex with them, you're either becoming their wife or husband, or you're violating the relationship of their future wife or husband. Um, let's see, adultery, um, do not, uh, the eighth, I think it's um, do not um, be telling untruths, ripping apart the character of somebody else. Um, so, and, and that, I think, has to do with violating truthfulness and honesty. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's more explicit than that, but you can just extrapolate it to mean, to, to, to cover those things. Then you have, um, oh man, let me see. I think adultery might be seven, lying is eight, I think. Shoot, what is nine? Do not steal, I don't know if I already said that one. Not, I'm stealing, I might... I don't know if that's number nine or eight or what, but anyways, do not steal. Do not take what is not yours, um, which would include um, something that somebody is actually selling, you know, whether it's an actual product or whether it's, you know, um, music or whatever. Um, they're actually selling it, and you appropriate it without buying it when you're not supposed to. That's stealing. You know, any kind of, like, theft, stealing, um so anything like that and then the tenth one is do not uh, long to possess do not in your heart crave to possess something that's not yours whether it's somebody else's wife or husband and i think that has to do with um it seems to me 
to have to do with like intent and and motive um, that you you want so much to possess in your own, you know it can be consuming you where you want to possess something that somebody else owns um, and violations of those things causes disharmony and dysfunction in the world around us and so um, whether or not like say whether or not somebody is evil of course there's the obvious manifestation you know if somebody um, murders and rapes and uh, cannibalizes people you know we would I don't know of too many people that would say that that's not evil I'm sure there are people out there but lots of people would say yes that's evil but if you are contributing when you contribute to um, disharmony between uh, people um, when you contribute to, to um, animosity and hostility um, dysfunction between people that's evil that's evil um, now for someone to say like a baby is evil doesn't really make any sense I'm like a baby doesn't even have the ability to make moral choices I mean a baby may be like um, I don't know a baby's just growing a baby's just learning I mean they don't even know how to talk they're they're just learning that's that's pretty much all their life you know they're they're dependent and learning that's what a baby is as far as I can tell dependent and learning now as they get older they start making moral choices and you may be able to see um, dysfunction you know when a child say a toddler just says no to almost everything you say and you know that's that's dysfunctional because functional would be harmony between um, the child and the, the parent um, but there has to be the growth process taking place so there's dysfunction there um, so I, I can't I wouldn't say that children are evil now you of course you can have corruption where um, the law of entropy and the universe is winding down and we we start dying the moment probably even before we're born although I'm not positive but our body starts aging and like as you age that's you're you're heading towards death so you're in a corrupt state now of course not, that's not your fault you're not responsible for that and you're responsible to a good degree of your own behavior and, and thoughts but even then um, ultimate responsibility lies with the Almighty and I think he takes responsibility and he says you're going to be okay I want you to choose the good for good's sake, for your good and others' sake, and from you know to to um, because I want good relations with you. But one way or the other, I'm going to bring you to a good place, and I have purpose to everything that happens. So if you fail or mess up, it's not only your own doing. It's the Almighty has put you in that situation and um, supplied you with what you have so that you you act accordingly. Anyways, um, yeah, I I hope that you have gotten something out of this and and hopefully you you see and understand my understanding of evil it's primarily dysfunction you know say if somebody kills and slaughters millions of people that's highly highly dysfunctional that's not functional that's not operating accurately and correctly um, if somebody's really really intelligent very very gifted in many areas and they do wrong to people they're being dysfunctional I mean, they they can be all gifted and intelligent, and that's great, and I'm happy for them. But if if they're doing wrong to other people, they're being dysfunctional. So functional and dysfunctional. Happily, we're all going to get to a place in the future where there's only going to be functional. The dysfunctional is going to be done. It's going to be gone. Um, now that may take a little while and that may take more than this life to get to that place but it's going to happen um, but if for the people that are solely relying on this life to have function and to have good I'm so so sorry because it's not gonna happen in this life I mean to me that's obvious if you look or look at the world around you it's obvious that there's not good taking place here and that it's a pipe dream it's just not gonna happen in this life so I'm sorry for, for anybody that believes that, but I just want to give you reassurance that this life is not all there is, that the good is coming, it's going to happen, um, and you will be part of it one way or another, at one point or another, maybe later, maybe sooner, I'm not sure, but the good is going to happen. Um, but I highly advise you to seek the Almighty Yahweh because um, He's the key. He is the only way to go. 
Um, and he is like sovereign, ultimately sovereign. And I'm glad of that. Anyways, I'm <laughs> slightly rambling. Hope you don't mind. I hope that I have been uh, cohesive and comprehensive with this to at least some degree. Anyways, thank you very much for watching and um, have a good life. And I will talk to you later. Feel free to comment. Um, if you want to say that I'm a little bit loony, that's fine. Anyways, um, thank you. Have a good night or day or morning or whenever you watch this. And um, feel free to comment. Thanks. Have a good life. Bye.